Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be going over the all new Ammo Reflex Pro 2. Now this is the most slick, most hydrophobic, most layerable product I've ever created. I'm really excited about it, but we're really gonna focus in on why I created it, how it goes on, and then answer some FAQs at the end. But first, we're gonna be going over the step-by-step -step process for installing it on a vehicle. The car that we're gonna be using, of course, is the Ammo 964. It's super simple. Let me show you how. First, make sure your car is clean and free of contaminants. Now, clearly the 964 is pretty dirty, so I performed a quick but thorough wash with ammo foam and a microfiber wash towel. If while you're washing the car, you feel with your hand and realize that it needs to be clayed, now is the time to do it with the help of ammo foam as the lubricant to ensure that the cured coating when it's done is as smooth as possible. Likewise, if you feel that you need to polish your paint, now is the time to do it prior to applying Reflex Pro 2. If not, just dry your paint, then final wipe with a 50-50 isopropyl alcohol and water mixture to clean up any leftover oils and residue. Next, with your protective gloves, glasses, and mask on, prime your blue microfiber applicator pad with plenty of Reflex Pro 2 and apply the coating in overlapping motions in a 2x2 two two section in a thick application. Allow approximately two minutes or so to cure or until you see it rainbow, then lightly remove with multiple microfiber towels. Reflex Pro 2 can and should be layered on top of itself in two separate layers with about 30 minutes cure time in between each layer. To do this, use about half of a bottle per application layer. Once your application process is done, then allow it to cure overnight, avoid water for about six hours and heavy washes for one week to allow it to fully cure and look absolutely spectacular. When you're all done, you can see just how much depth and shine has been applied to your paint. Absolutely insane. For now, let's go over some of the most common questions I receive about Reflex Pro 2. Okay, so having a coating on your car is beneficial for many reasons. Most obvious one is the chemical resistance. So if you have bird poo, acid rain, or maybe some harsh car wash chemicals that hit it, you're gonna have some more protection over your clear coat, very obvious. But from a more practical perspective, what people love about having a coating on their car, the characteristic is the self-cleaning aspect of it. Meaning if the car is relatively dirty, you can go in and power wash it. It's gonna beat up, carry that dirt away. Then you can go in maybe with hydrate, let's say, dry the car, 15 minutes, it looks fantastic. On a side note, if it's really dirty, you do have to do a proper wash. But my point being, having a coating on your car with that contact angle, the surface energy being very low, you have high self-cleaning characteristics. So we're gonna run upstairs right now. I'll show you from a more chemistry perspective what's really going on and how Reflex Pro 2 creates a very, very broad or greater than 90 degree contact angle to help with self-cleaning. So in other words, that means your car is gonna stay cleaner longer. We are trying to create as detailers lower surface energy by putting this protection on. Why? Because what's on top of it, the water, we wanna have more surface tension by creating less surface energy underneath it. So that's where it gets a little bit confusing. Now, if we back up a little bit, when you look at water, we've all seen the YouTube videos or movies or whatever, we have a little water droplet and it's in a, a sphere, right? Or you have the spider walking across it or the razor blade sitting on top of it and you're not penetrating that water. That's the surface tension of that water. And that's what's going on here. But if you create something, let's just say for instance, surface tension, it's not, is one, right? and what you're putting on it, meaning the coating is a zero, you have the spread. This is gonna have higher surface tension than what's on there or anything above oil, anything like that. So you're really playing with the surface energy. The reason you're doing that is the self-cleaning abilities. That's what makes coating so great is that it actually carries the contamination away in this bead, which is really cool, versus hydrophilic, where it'll just kind of like go over the top of the surface of the contamination and not really pull it out. That's why when you coat your car, you power wash it sometimes, you don't even need to wash it, it just like blows a lot of that dirt off. Reflex Pro 2 builds on the original formula by adding elastomer technology that increases its slickness and hydrophobicity. Now, what that means in layman terms is if once it's cured, you put your hand on there, it feels super smooth, super slick. And at the same time, we've also increased the contact angle of the water beading on your car. So that's gonna help with the self-cleaning characteristics of the coating.
So one of the most common questions I get is where can you put Reflex Pro 2 on, meaning what surface? Right off the bat, obviously you can put it on paint, you can put it on clear coated paint and single stage paint. So I wanted to make a point about that. You can also put it on trim. This is plastic here. The headlight or the side light here is, is plastic. The headlight is actually glass. You can put that on there, the trim here, and then you can put it on PPF. That is a big question as well. But when you do put it on PPF, you have to understand that is a different surface, very porous, very pliable. So you, when you do put it on, you have to let it sit it, it's going to rainbow and then taking it off is going to be slightly more challenging because the underneath part meaning the ppf is very sticky so you will use more towels so keep that in mind you can also use that on matte surfaces meaning when some cars come in that have a matte beautiful finish on there you can put it on but when you do apply it you have to go a little bit softer because you don't want to ruin the matte surface just like you would do anything else you want to make sure it's super clean and then when you wipe it off very gentle wipes but what i do recommend is using a lower section of the car maybe the back right rear that kind of thing and just testing it out what happens is when you put it on matte finished paint it's going to become a very deep rich look i encourage it i like it i think 99 percent of people like it but maybe you don't like that brightness that comes with the matte finish so make sure you test it but it can go on there successfully and you should put it on because it will protect it because you can't really put normal things on matte finished paint so keep that in mind now when it comes to the glass that's a big question you can, in fact, put it on glass. I discourage you to put it on the windshield. Why? As the windshield wipers are going, you might get some chattering because it's not designed to interact with that rubber going back and forth. But yes, you can put it on there, definitely the sides, and some windshield wipers work better than others, so keep that in mind. When it comes to the wheels, you can put it on the wheels, but we've also designed a product called Gillet Pro that goes on the wheels. Now, the difference between the two of them is very, very strong. There's a huge gap between them. When you're putting, when you're putting something on paint, you want to have it elastomer in there. You want it to be very flexible because this heats up and cools down. It expands and contracts. You get a little bit less of that on the wheels. So we've taken that aspect out, made the heat or the temperature resistance much higher because wheels obviously get much higher. And at the same time, we've made it much more stiff, much more rigid because this isn't flexing as much as maybe the middle of your hood is that example. So they're separate products for separate things, but in theory, yes, you can put it on your wheels, but I do recommend Gillet. That's basically all of the car. Only thing you really don't want to put it on is the rubber of your wheels and you should be good to go. Okay, when it comes to maintaining Reflex Pro 2, it is super simple. If it's not that dirty, you can go in, power wash it, then dry it with hydrate, and you're good to go. 15, 20 minutes, not a big deal. If the car is very dirty, then you'll have to do a normal standard wash, then power wash it, dry it with hydrate, and again, you're good to go. In between those washes, I recommend using Reflex Pro Top Coat. That's gonna rejuvenate the original coating that's on the paint, no problem, and it'll look good and actually just extend the life of the product. Okay, now when it comes to putting products on top of Reflex Pro 2, you can do a lot. You can put skin, you can put blush, you can put top coat on there, but more importantly, you can actually put another layer of Reflex Pro 2 on there. I highly encourage that. That's gonna increase its longevity. It's gonna increase its slickness and of course, hydrophobicity. At the same time, if you don't want to put anything on there, you can just leave it as is and it's still going to be incredibly strong. But I encourage you as the crazy people that we are watching this right now, I love touching my car. I love maintaining it and putting wax on it if I go to a car show or reinstalling another layer of Reflex Pro 2. You're just going to get increased depth and shine. It's absolutely amazing. As always, guys, if you have any questions about this or anything else, you can reach me at Larry at AmmoNYC.com. Thanks for watching and enjoy Reflex Pro 2.